Hi, I'm Kel Karpinski. I make queer sailor zines, and I'm going to be reading from my zine, The Ghosts of Times Square, a zine exploring representation of Times Square through film. Congrats, you have found a piece of the hidden history of New York City. In many parts of the city, you can still catch glimpses of the city's past, but here it seems like it's all been erased. Only the ghosts remain beneath the Disneyfication that has sanitized and further corporatized Times Square. Marshall Berman writes in a piece entitled Sign of the Times, the Lower 42nd Street, so much of the talk of Times Square seems to be both driven and crippled by nostalgia. In the 1980s, some people complained that it wasn't what it had been in the 1940s, others that it wasn't what it had been in the 1970s. It seems that there will always be a certain nostalgia time attached to Times Square for those who have loved the many versions of it. Thus, I offer a brief glimpse into its past, not without complication, as it has been immortalized through and with its connection to film, connect focusing on the late 60s through the 70s. I'm interested in how these films portrayed the space of Times Square, as well as sex work in the porn theaters. While by no means an exhaustive list of the films that either engage with these themes or use Times Square as a backdrop, I see this as a starting point for exploring these themes. I provide an introduction to many of these films and ideas, but there is so much more that cannot fit in the scene. Thus, I have provided information to additional sources from many sections, as well as resources related to Times Square in general, so that you can seek out what interests you. This is a map I edited um, to look at the Times Square area. Um, obviously, Times Square proper is 42nd Street and Broadway. We're thinking about how Times Square radiates out to the larger space. So for a lot of my research and for this scene, when I'm thinking about um, what I call the greater Times Square area, I'm thinking about um, north to the park, south to 34th Street, west to 9th Avenue, and east to 3rd Avenue. And so in a lot of my research um, in the scene, and then um, the scene eventually uh, evolved into my master's thesis. So that also exists if you're interested in a, a more in-depth look at some of the stuff. Um, mapping these queer texts and narratives onto the city, um, especially those about um, male hustlers. Um, in this scene in particular, it's uh, Pink Narcissus and Flesh. So these are the sections about Pink Narcissus and Flesh. There's a lot of text here. Um, I'm not gonna read it all to you, but um, folks who are interested, there are still a handful of copies of uh, colors, copies of the zines as well as black and white copies. And hopefully I will have uh, international stamps soon. Uh, we got Midnight Cowboy in 1969. It has a lot of really great shots of Times Square. And also um, there's an image here of uh, Joe D'Alessandro on the set of Midnight Cowboy. He, He's our main character in Flesh. News from Home, Chantal Ackerman, 1977. This one's a little bit later, um, but has some really beautiful shots of Times Square as well as the city. Here we're looking at the 123, uh, the Times Square subway station, and um, you know, in many ways it does not look drastically different uh, today. Taxi Driver, Scorsese in 76. Um, the, the fun fact I always like to share, thinking about how drastically Times Square has changed over the last 40 years, um, Travis Bickle takes his date to a porn theater, and it is now the same theater where the Harry Potter play is. Boys in the Sand, Wakefield Pool, 1971. Um, this is a, a gay porn film, and it doesn't take place in Times Square. It actually takes place exclusively on Fire Island, but um, it did play in the 55th Street Playhouse, where Flash also played, so thinking about the greater Times Square area. Um, a couple important historical moments for Boys in the Sand. First porn to be reviewed by Variety Magazine, first porn to be advertised in the New York Times, and notably the first porn to get its name by parroting the name of another film, uh, Boys in the Band by William Friedkin. There's some saucy shots on the left from the actual film. Um, and then the HBO show The Deuce, which uh, takes place in Times Square, largely looking at sex work, uh, did a uh, the like film premiere, portrayed the film premiere of Boys in the Sand. And so there's some images from that. Also included Shaft, 71. Um, most black exploitation films take place exclusively in Harlem, but John Shaft often finds himself in Times Square. Um, mean Streets and French Connection, although not primarily in Times Square, have some great shots. Um, the B movies, um, I've included a few of them. They have some great titles. I haven't seen any of these, but Frankenhooker, Massage Parlor Murders. 
Um, and then the, the big takeaway, I think, um, if you're interested in this stuff, is read Times Square by Times Square Blue um, by Samuel Delaney. The first half documents his own sexual encounters in these porn theaters, and the second half documents the changing zoning laws, the Disneyfication of Times Square, and how, um, how all of that has changed drastically. It's a great, it's a great book, and Samuel Delaney is an incredible writer, so um, I definitely highly recommend that. All right, that's it. Thank you.